and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. I am Ashwarya Kapoor with the news tonight. Here are the headlines this hour. At Prime Minister's Tea Party, no signs of thaw in BJP Sena relations. Modi urges NDA MPs to take the government's program to people. In Haryana, leading lights of the BJP attend a swearing-in ceremony of Manohar Lal Khattar as the new Chief Minister. Situation in East Delhi, Sri Lokpuri locality under control. After three days of clashes, prohibitory orders imposed in the area. And elections in Ukraine strengthen prospects of a pro-Western shift, heightened fears of a more pronounced rift with Russia. Our big focus, Narendra Modi hosted NDA MPs at a tea party today. He is reported to have urged them to make people aware of the government's programs. Shiv Sena MPs were also invited to the meeting, triggering speculation about the party's relations with the BJP after it broke away from the alliance in Maharashtra. Meanwhile, the Maharashtra BJP legislature party will be meeting on Tuesday to elect their leader, paving the way to stake claim to form the government. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's tea party on Sunday was for the MPs of the NDA. But the focus of attention was on the Shiv Sena and the political situation in Maharashtra. It was the first time since the Modi government took over that all parliamentarians of the ruling NDA were coming together. Modi reportedly asked the MPs to make people aware of the government schemes. बहुत सारे व्यक्तिगत और भावनात्मक विषयों पर उन्होंने विषय रखा। मुझे लगता है कि एक सीधा संवाद देश के प्रधानमंत्री ने अपने सांसदों से, एनडीए के सांसदों के साथ किया। ये अपने आप में एक ऐतिहासिक अनुभव रहा है और मैं समझता हूं कि बहुत ही कामयाब बैठक रही। Among those present were BJP veterans Lal Krishna Advani and Muli Manohar Joshi. Cabinet ministers Venkaiya Naidu, Arun Jaitli, Shushma Swaraj, Dr. Harshvardhan, Rajyavardhan Singh Rathod, and BJP President Amit Shah were present there. He is doing this. He he had a meeting with the press. There was a you know it was just a, a milan as they say. See, post Diwali milan, and uh, an NDA meeting had taken place for some time. So. Therefore, uh, it was held today. Since the Sena had called off its alliance with the BJP before the Maharashtra Assembly elections, the Prime Minister's invite for high tea was considered as a way to restrain the alliance. Purani relations are kaiyam rahenge, aur kyunki 50 saal ki hamari alliance manne wala sab Thakre ji, Pramod Mahajan ji, Munde sab, aur Adarniya Adal ji aur Adarniya ji ne ki thi. To ho sakta Hindu ji ke upar ye alliance hui hamari Shivsena ke saath hai BJP ka. To aage bhi rahega. आज पता नहीं अभी आज क्या डिसीजन होता है हम लोग तो मिलेंगे आज चाय के लिए हमारी पार्टी ने आदेश दिया मानने वालों जी ने आदेश दिया कि अब जा क्या है Meanwhile, in Maharashtra, while some leaders have suggested that Diyudhav Thakre was keen on his party forming a coalition government with the BJP, there are still doubts if the alliance will be revived. इस संदर्भ में जो भी निर्णय करना है वो हमारे पक्ष प्रमुख उद्धव ठाकरे करेंगे चर्चा चल रही है जो भी होगा सम्मान से होगा और अच्छा ही होगा जनता ने जनादेश दिया है भाजपा की सरकार बनेगी और बहुत बढ़िया चलेगी और मुझे लगता है दो सौ अठासी विधायक किसी को वापस चुनाव नहीं चाहिए वो महाराष्ट्र की भाजपा मिनी मोदी सरकार का समर्थन करेगी द बीजेपी नीड्स थर्टीन मोर लेजिस्लेटर्स टू रीच द मैजिक फिगर एंड फॉर्म द गवर्नमेंट While the NCP with 41 legislators has offered unconditional support to the BJP, there are also reports speculating that the BJP may go for a minority government. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And Manohar Lal Khattar was uh, today sworn in as the Chief Minister of Haryana, where the BJP formed a government for the first time on its own. 60-year-old Khattar, a first-time MLA from Karnal, was administered the oath along with nine ministers by Governor Kaptan Singh Solanki. Now, leading personalities of the BJP, led by the Prime Minister, Party Chief Amit Shah, and veteran leaders LK Advani and Murli Manohar Joshi were present at the ceremony. Take a look. <laughs> Prime Minister Narendra Modi witnessing the swearing-in of the BJP's first government in Haryana along with senior leaders of the party. A 10-member cabinet led by new Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar took oath of office. This is a very important time when the Haryana has been able to get the Narendra Modi's leadership in Haryana. 
भारतीय जनता पार्टी एक संवेदनशील और जवाबदेही ट्रांसपेरेंट गवर्नमेंट बनाने जा रही है हरियाणा की जनता में एक नया उत्साह है कांग्रेस मुक्त हरियाणा हुआ है विकास युक्त हरियाणा होने जा रहा है द टेंथ चीफ मिनिस्टर मनोहर लाल खट्टर जी हैज टेकन ओथ एंड श्योरली द पीपल ऑफ हरियाणा आर एंड टुडे दैट डेवलपमेंट एंड नॉन करप्ट वे ऑफ मूविंग अहेड वुड बी एंश्योर्ड बाय द बीजेपी गवर्नमेंट इन हरियाणा ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट ऑन द ओकेजन वर चीफ मिनिस्टर्स ऑफ फोर बीजेपी रूल स्टेट्स 60 year old Khattar is a first time MLA who has a four decade long association with the RSS. He is also the first Punjabi and the fifth non-jar chief minister of the state. Hamari prathamikta reh gayi jo manifesto humne janta ke samne pesh kiya tha usko hum jaldi se jaldi pura kare. Aur main janta ko vishwas dilata hu jis ichcha aur ummeed se logon ne Bharatiya Janata Party ki sarkar ko banaya un ichcha aur ummeedon ke anusar is Pradesh ka vikas hoga. In a departure from the past the ceremony was held at Panchkula instead of Chandigarh as has been the practice so far. निश्चित तौर से वो बधाई के पात्र हैं उनको वो पूरा देश और पूरे हरियाणा के लोग बधाई दे रहे हैं इसलिए बधाई दे रहे हैं कि उन्होंने कभी भी परिश्रम किया उन्होंने बिना फल के परिश्रम किया दी ऑपोजिशन आई एन एल डी वॉज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई अभय चौटाला वाइल पंजाब चीफ मिनिस्टर प्रकाश सिंह बादल हुज पार्टी एस ए डी अपोज द बीजेपी एंड बैक्ट आई एन एल डी ड्यूरिंग द असेंबली इलेक्शन ऑल्सो अटेंड द सेरेमनी जो विश्वास हरियाणा प्रदेश की जनता ने भारतीय जनता पार्टी के लोगों पर जताया है हम उन्हें शुभकामनाएं देते हैं बधाई देते हैं और सकारात्मक तौर से नकारात्मक तौर से नहीं सकार पॉजिटिवनेस से हम हरियाणा प्रदेश की सरकार की तरफ आगे बढ़कर के देखते हैं द सिक्स कैबिनेट मिनिस्टर्स आर कविता जैन स्टेट बीजेपी प्रेसिडेंट राम बिलास शर्मा अभिमन्यू ओम प्रकाश धानकर अनिल विज एंड नारबीर सिंह विक्रम सिंह ठेकेदार कृष्ण कुमार बेदी एंड करण देव कम्बोज टुक ओथ एज मिनिस्टर्स ऑफ स्टेट Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV And in some tragic news at least 9 persons including 5 women were killed and 24 injured when a bus fell into a roadside ditch in the Nanagaon district of Assam the injured were shifted to nearby hospitals and some of the passengers are critical The incident took place near Kaliabor at around 1:30 a.m. when the bus hit a culvert at top speed The Assam State Transport Corporation was taking passengers to Guwahati from Lakhimpur when it fell into a 20 feet deep ditch And the news from the national capital well Trilokpuri area remained under curfew on Sunday no new incidents of violence was reported a day after five people were shot at during a communal clash at least 35 people including 14 policemen were severely injured the clash on Thursday was uh, took place between two groups over a Diwali celebration since then authorities imposed prohibitory orders under section 144 banning illegal gatherings the police detained around 70 people till Saturday night after the the two groups pelted stones at each other on friday bahut kheed hai ki kis jis tarah se trilokpuri mein dange bhadkaye ja rahe hain aur ye ek pattern sa banta ja raha hai jahan chunav ho jahan bipoles ho wahan dange karwa diye jaye delhi ke andar kitne saalon se koi dange nahi hue pehli bar dange ho rahe hain दिल्ली की जनता इसको बर्दाश्त करने वाली नहीं है आई पर्सनली फील दैट द पुलिस शुड डू इट कंट्रोल इट विदाउट एनी डिस्क्रिमिनेशन एंड दूथ हु आर इन्वॉल्व इन टू द होल थिंग दिस शुड बी टेकन केयर ऑफ बाई दथॉरिटीज and the government cleared defense projects worth a whopping 80000 crore rupees yesterday the deal includes a six submarines being made indigenously now experts have welcomed the decision saying that it could have a positive impact on india's defense capabilities take a look india is buying at least 8000 spike missiles and over 300 launchers in a deal worth 32 billion rupees The deal also includes acquisition of six conventional submarines and two major submarines known as swimmer delivery vehicles. The decision of the government, the Defence Acquisition Committee, to clear deals worth almost eighty thousand crores, is a very major decision. It's also a welcome decision in terms of signalling what you might call as the intent of the Modi government. Various items have been identified. particularly the submarine building project as also the anti tank missile which is to be acquired from israel 
In line with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Make in India campaign, all six boats will be made in Indian shipyards. 80,000 crore deals have been signed in defence. This only points to the fact that this government is extremely serious about defence deal in India. We had seen as to how the previous dispensation of Congress was not at all serious about defence. The most important uh, part in this deal is that 50,000 worth submarines would be made in India. This is in keeping with what the Prime Minister had called for, make in India. And secondly, we have also seen that the defence badly needed upgradation. This government has worked in that direction. Never any uh, improvement in our defence uh, 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 material and uh, defence strength is uh, uh, done. Any endeavour, any effort done, any money spent must be welcome in the best interest of the country. But the government of India and the defence ministry will have to ensure that the deal is transparent, honest, and is without any. Uh, waste of money, it must go to the uh, army, it must go to the military, it must go to the defence. The five-month-old government wants to clear a backlog of defence orders created by last UPA government. Within a few months, the NDA government boosted defence spending by 12% to around $32 billion for the current fiscal year and also allowed more foreign investment into local industry to jumpstart production. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And here is all the other news and updates from across the country in our special segment, Nationwide. The ruling uh, National Conference on Sunday said that the time was not right for elections in Jammu and Kashmir. Its coalition partner Congress and opposition parties, however, welcomed the Election Commission's announcement to conduct assembly elections on time. The Commission earlier announced five-phase elections in Jammu and Kashmir between 25th of November and 20th of December. An RTA reply to Lok Sabha Secretariat said that over 400 Lok Sabha members are yet to declare their assets and liability details. The list includes union ministers and leaders of the BJP, the Congress, the SP and others. Sri Lankan Naval Chief Vice Admiral Jayanta Pereira will arrive in the national capital on a five-day official visit from Monday. India is keen to build its defence ties with Sri Lanka to counter China's inroads in the Indian Ocean. Several political parties in Tamil Nadu are protesting against the visit. A major blaze broke out in a military canteen near a railway station in South Mumbai late on Saturday night. Six fire engines were rushed to the spot soon after getting a call. No casualties were reported. The Central Railway's harbour line through which the Dockyard Road station crosses was temporarily suspended. A cracker burst in the area seems to have caused the fire. All right, we'll take a very short break here. Coming up ahead, Brazil votes for a new president. This and much more after a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back after the break. Uh, on to some international news now. And organizers of a planned vote among Hong Kong's pro democracy demonstrators abruptly cancelled it on Sunday. Now, the move seems to have exposed tension and confusion over how to sustain the movement further. It has been a month since the protesters occupied major streets in Hong Kong to demand free elections. After considering all these different views uh, this morning, the five parties, uh, five party platform, make a decision, though you may say a very difficult decision to make, that, um, that we will um, suspend the, uh, the uh, plaza voting. Democracy protesters in Hong Kong undecided on their next step. The movement leaders cancelled a vote on their month long street occupation and plans to accept government concessions. Apology. The apology is for the occupiers in different protest areas because uh, we understand and have heard from uh, them that uh, the, the voting today is uh, is uh, there's lots of conflict and lots of different opinions. The vote was supposed to find out the protesters' support for counter-proposals made by Hong Kong's government after talks last week. The Hong Kong government offered to submit a report to Beijing, noting the unhappiness of the protesters with a committee to screen candidates for the chief executive's post. But that does not mean the end of the, of the movement, but actually it will provide us a, an opportunity for people to consider what might be the next step. Tens 
of thousands of protesters joined a sit-in calling for full democracy in Hong Kong since September. Though numbers have fallen, committed demonstrators said they won't give up occupation of central areas till China changes its mind on rules for the 2017 election. On Tuesday, student protest leaders and government officials held talks for the first time but made little progress. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And Ukrainian voters are going to polls for a new parliament. Now, opinion polls suggest that they are likely to pick a pro-Western parliament that should give President, President Petro Poroshenko a mandate to end the separatist conflict in the East. However, that may inject new tension into the Ukraine's ties with Russia. Here is more. Ukrainians voted on Sunday in snap elections for a new parliament. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe monitors are present to observe the voting. This is an uh, 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 extraordinary election in many ways. Uh, what we are seeing here in Ukraine right now is, is uh, they are going for a par par parliamentary election where part of the country is uh, illegally annexed by, by Russia. We have part of the country where there's a warlike situation. The election is called by President Petro Poroshenko. It is expected to produce an assembly that has a pro-Europe majority. Opinion polls indicated a political grouping supporting Poroshenko was likely to become the main force in the 450-seat assembly. Выборы це надзвичайно важлива подія в нашому житті. Ми маємо унікальну можливість вперше отримати український парламент, який е вестиме Україну до Європи. Це єдності мусить перемогти. Це означає, що Україна мусить стати мирною, успішною європейською країною. About 3 million people in the eastern Donetsk and Luhansk regions in Donbass, however, are not taking part in the vote. The separatists plan to hold their own polls next month. The Donetsk National Republic will not be able to vote in the Parliament of Ukraine, because it is different countries. If anyone wants to vote, he has already come to the Ukraine. These are the first parliamentary polls in Ukraine since street protests in capital Kiev last winter forced Moscow-backed leader Viktor Yanukovych to flee and ushered in a pro-Europe leadership under Poroshenko. A pro-Poroshenko outcome in these elections will increase strains and ties with Russia. Kiev blames Russia for backing the rebels in the east in a conflict that has killed more than 3,700 people and aggravated Ukraine's economic problems. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And close to 142 million Brazilians are voting in uh, in what has been said to be the tightest presidential election in decades. Now, incumbent left-leaning president Zilmar Rousseff of the Workers' Party is facing centrist Esio Neves of the Brazilian Social Democracy Party in the second runoff round. Both the candidates have pledged to kickstart Latin America's largest economy and make it more competitive. The latest opinion polls showed President Rousseff with a slight lead. Opposition candidate Neves had surprised in the first round of the voting by surging from a distant third place in the polls to clinch the second position. And here is all the other international news and updates in Global Buzz. Tunisians on Sunday voted in parliamentary elections to bring democracy in the country. Most of the major parties have pledged to tackle Tunisia's high unemployment and to invigorate its economy. Over 100 political parties are participating in the elections. 5.2 million people are eligible voters. Uruguayans also voted on Sunday in a presidential election. Outgoing President Jose Mujica is seeking to hand power back to his predecessor Tabare Vasquez. Both Mujica and Vasquez delivered a decade of strong economic growth, while Mujica legalized abortion, gay marriage and the production, distribution and sale of marijuana. Iraqi soldiers cleared car bombs as they pushed towards the northern city of Beji, which they are attempting to retake from Islamic State militants. Now, Beji is near the country's largest oil refinery that has been in government hands since June, despite a siege by Islamic State. The Beji refinery is surrounded by militants. Alright, we'll take a very short break here. Bitter fallout for Dwayne Bravo and Marilyn Samuels. This is coming up after a short break.
Welcome back after the break and now we get you all the sporting action in our sports beat. The Indo-Zimbabwean pair of Sanya Mirza and Kara Black won the prestigious doubles title at the WTA Finals. The third seeds knocked out their second seeds opponents, Su Wei of Chinese Taipei and Peng Shui of China 6-1-6-0. It was the third doubles crown for Kara, while Mirza won her first victory at the season-ending championships. West Indies captain Dwayne Bravo hit back at Marilyn Samuels, who claimed that he was not part of their plan to abandon the tour of India last week. Bravo said that his teammates spoke vigorously during the team meetings. Samuel said that since he was not accredited uh, with the West Indies Player Association, he wanted to focus on finishing the Indian tour. Spain's Tommy Robredo defeated Jeremy Chardy of uh, France in straight sets to reach the finals of the Valencia Open. The unseeded Robredo, a semi-finalist in Valencia in 2008, edged Chardy 7-6, 7-6 in a tightly contested semi-final. At the Swiss Indoors Championships in Basel, Roger Federer beat Croatia's Ivo Karlovic to advance to the finals. Federer defeated his opponent 7-6, 3-6, 6-3. Borussia Dortmund's miserable domestic season continued when they lost 1-0 at home to fellow strugglers Hannover 96. It was their fourth Bundesliga defeat in a row. Dortmund have taken only one point in their last six league games. They dominated the first hour, but they were foiled by Hannover goalkeeper Ron Robert Zeller. the news, a noted historian Romila Thapa today underscored the importance of the spirit of inquiry and the role of intellectuals in civil society. Tracing their relevance since the age of Buddha, she said that such tendencies were needed to create the environment for social change. Thapa said this in her address at the Nikhil Chakravati Memorial Lecture that was attended by well-known personalities from the fields of literature and journalism. Um, I remembered his warm and affectionate Today, I have a feeling that space has shrunk and the intellectual parameters seem to have narrowed. It also seems that those in authority and those influencing public opinion have less respect for what we call the public intellectual in these days. Well, that's all in this edition of News Tonight. Thanks so much for watching. Good night. Thank you.